Okay, today's lecture is going to be about solar power. So the three uh, quasi final exam questions for today are what are the two main solar power technologies? Uh, what are their relative advantages and disadvantages? What are the costs and benefits of incorporating solar PV into electric power systems? And what is the difference between distributed and utility scale solar power production? So there's two main types of solar power um, that we use in the United States. Uh, the first is concentrated solar power, uh, and the second are photo photovoltaics. Um, so concentrated with concentrated solar power, we're using lenses or mirrors and tracking systems to focus a large area of sunlight into a small beam. Um, and then that focused sunlight is used to heat a working fluid in a steam cycle that um, spins a turbine and generates electricity, um, not unlike um, what we've seen in uh, nuclear, um, coal, and natural gas. Uh, steam-based generation. Uh, with photovoltaics, uh, we're converting light directly into electrical current. So let's start with concentrated solar power. So the whole idea with concentrated solar power um, is to take incoming solar radiation um, and to focus it uh, on one specific location uh, to generate uh, a, an extreme amount of heat, in this case to uh, to convert some sort of working fluid into steam in order to spin a turbine and generate electricity. Um, there is uh, sort of a, a, a famous example of this from history or at least mythology, um, where Archimedes uh, defended, um, I think Syracuse, some sort of town, uh, ancient Greek town against the incoming Roman armada. Um, and the, the myth goes that he used mirrors uh, to concentrate um, the light from the sun on uh, certain areas of the wooden ships, and he was able to burn them. And I actually think this was the subject of a Mythbusters episode, uh, and in which they actually busted this myth, which means that I, I think they disproved that this was actually possible. And that was actually a a uh, team of undergraduate and I think maybe graduate too, uh, under, uh, en engineering students from MIT uh, who did a really nice job a couple years ago of also showing that this is technically feasible but extremely unlikely to have occurred. Okay, so there are two different types of concentrated solar power. The first and the, the major player in the market for concentrated solar uh, is parabol parabolic trough technology. So the way that, that this works is that you have these concave mirrors um, that are focusing incoming sol uh, solar radiation uh, onto a single point, a focal point uh, on the interior of the, uh, of the mirror. Um, and you have these linear long trenches of um, parabolic trough uh, reflectors. Uh, and what's, uh, what's located at the focal point actually um, is some sort of tube that's carrying an absorber tube that's carrying a working fluid. Um, and so as that light is concentrated on the focal point, uh, that fluid moving within the tube, the fluid gets really, really hot. And so typically you're using as a, a working fluid some sort of substance like molten salt um, that can get really, really hot but not boil. Uh, and the advantage of that is, is that you can store that um, you can store that heat in the working fluid over a long period of time in storage tanks. Um, and then when you want to use it, uh, you can transport it and have that uh, very, very hot working fluid interact with a steam cycle. So in other words, um, you're passing uh, the, the very hot working fluid um, across some sort of exchange uh, where it's interacting with water. Uh, that's at a cooler temperature. And as the water that's at a cooler temperature interacts with or passes through um, or around um, the very hot working fluid, it changes from water to steam, and then it can be used to drive a steam generator or turbine. Um, and so the advantage here with concentrated solar power and the use of a working fluid that can be stored and, and have its uh, heat retained over long periods of time is that concentrated solar power can actually be a dispatchable uh, form of generation. In other words, um, you could conceivably generate electricity even when the sun is not shining because you're harvesting that heat from the sun when it is shining and then you're able to store that heat, that energy in the working fluid uh, 
uh, until you want to dispatch it, um, that dispatch electricity at a later point in time. So the other type of um, concentrated solar power that's in existence are central power towers. Um, so these are a little bit different. You're using heliostats, which are mirrors um, to concentrate uh, the, the solar power or the solar insulation on a, a focal point that's uh, far away um, that's located at the top of a uh, that's top of, top of a tower, and that uh, heat is then used to drive a steam turbine. So concentrating solar power is expanding, uh, at least installed capacity. Most of the world's uh, concentrated solar power capacity exists in either Spain or the United States. So again, one of the main advantages of concentrated solar power is that it's dispatchable because you're able to store that the heat that exists in that working fluid, for example, a molten salt, um, in those uh, in those storage tanks until you're ready to, to, to pass it through the heat exchanger in order to generate steam um, and generate electricity. So um, the in other words, what we're saying is that concentrated solar power can actually be scheduled, um, similar to the way we schedule generation at a conventional coal or natural gas plant. So even though the, uh, the world's uh, installed capacity of, of concentrated solar power is increasing, um, we, sh we should be aware of the fact that um, compared to uh, total installation of PV or photovoltaics, concentrated solar power is today a very, very small a segment of the market for solar power. So it's worth asking why that is, especially because concentrated solar power is a dispatchable source of generation. It's controllable, which in a way gets us out of a lot of the challenges that we face with uh, intermittent or variable uh, renewable energy like wind and solar. Um, and so the simple answer here is that it, it, it costs a lot more. Um, concentrated solar power is significantly more expensive, higher capital costs. Remember, with renewable energy, most of the cost comes from the capital cost. There's no fuel, uh, and operations and maintenance costs are relatively minor compared to the upfront cost of building the infrastructure in the first place. And so concentrated solar power has a significantly higher LCOE, which remember is the levelized cost of electricity. That's the um, essentially the break-even cost of electricity that the power plant would have to sell its uh, generation for. Uh, in order to make back um, th all the money that's required to pay the, the capital cost, which would translate to an annual mortgage payment, as well as any operational cost over the plant's useful lifetime. So any other reason you can think of that concentrated solar power um, might be lagging behind uh, PV or, or photovoltaics uh, in installed capacity. So the other reason um, is that uh, CSP is a utility scale generation technology, right? Only utilities can really build concentrated solar power. The advantage of PV, and we'll talk about this a lot um, in, in future lectures as well, is that uh, PV can be either utility scale or distributed. So distributed means that it's sited at the point of consumption and it may or might, may not be actually owned by the consumers that are that are using the electricity that's generated from the solar panels. So there are uh, the, there is potential for uh, future declines in CSP costs. Um, the the figure or the table the figure all the way at the right shows uh, potential cost declines in concentrating solar power. Um, the the blue is represented as sort of like observed LCO, LCOE data, database. Um, and orange are auction database. Uh, so that means that people are potentially selling um, electricity from concentrated solar power out into the future um, at lower prices. And so there's some potential for this to decline uh, in the future as well. Uh, and this, uh, this figure is also useful because it gives you some perspective on how other uh, renewable energy technologies, wind and solar, are expected to decline uh, in the future as well. So that's concentrated solar power. So now let's talk about PV. Uh, so photovoltaic solar converts solar insulation uh, into direct current electricity. So it's not uh, first generating heat to use um, uh, in order to generate steam, to spin something to generate electricity, which seems to be the main way we uh, generate electricity every other way. This is um, uh, an electrochemical um, engineered system. So we have 
uh, solar insulation being converted by uh, photovoltaic materials into direct current electricity. Um, and so this, these are materials that create an electro, electric, electric current when exposed to sunlight. Um, and so here's a, a simple diagram of, of how that happens. You have uh, different types of materials that are um, set up in a way that uh, is conducive to a flow of electrons moving across their interface. And that flow of electrons, that electrical current is then harvested. Um, now, the thing to, to remember about PV uh, is that the electrical current that is generated is direct current. And remember, the rest of our electrical grid is alternating current. And so uh, in order to integrate photovoltaic solar into the larger grid, Grid, it has to first be converted uh, from DC to AC. And we do that using devices that are called inverters. So materials that are used for photovoltaics include monocrystalline silicon, polycrystalline silicon, uh, and thin film. And there are other materials that are uh, that could be potentially used as well. Um, these are sort of the three main ones at the moment. Um, and they range in terms of efficiency, uh, but also cost. And so the rule of thumb here is that the ones that are most efficient are the most, also the most expensive. Those would be the monocrystalline silicon. And the ones that are the least efficient are the cheapest, and those would be the thin film. And so in the middle, we have polycrystalline silicon, which are sort of mid-range in both efficiency and cost. So this figure, uh, which is pretty interesting, all the different colors show the different types of materials that are being used in, in solar panels. Um, you have multi-junction cells, which are sort of experimental at this point, crystalline silicon cells, which are in blue, thin film technologies in green, and then emerging PV in orange. And on the y-axis here, we're tracking efficiency. So remember, we've talked about efficiency of coal plants, uh, natural gas plants, uh, nuclear power plants, even hydroelectric dams. And so what efficiency refers to is the ability to extract the embedded energy, whether that's the embedded energy, embedded kinetic energy in the movement of water in terms of hydropower, or the embedded chemical energy that's in coal or natural gas, and, to, and then to be able to convert that into actual electricity. And so what we talked about is that thermal power plants um, sort of conventional thermal power plants like coal or nuclear have efficiencies between sort of 30 and 40%. A lot of the heat that is generated in order to create steam to uh, to spin a turbine and generate electricity is ultimately lost. Hydroelectric dams we talked about as being some of the most efficient generators. They're able to convert about 85 to 90% of the kinetic energy of the uh, embedded in the movement of water into, into electrical energy. And what this figure here shows is that solar panels are able to convert, you know, 20 and, and maybe 30% of the energy embedded in uh, incoming solar insulation into electrical energy. So that's pretty low. So this figure gives you uh, an, a sense for which materials are dominating the market for uh, photovoltaic solar at this point is sort of a mix between multi uh, silicone and and and, and mono silicon. So similar to our discussion of wind power, um, capacity factor is uh, a useful term for understanding um, uh, solar power production. Um, so again, capacity factor is typically listed as a zero uh, as a value between zero and one, uh, and and what it is quantifying is the average fraction of maximum possible capacity that's actually used to produce electricity. Uh, in the case of solar, it depends on available solar insulation, um, and that can vary by location, uh, but also time of the year. Typically, capacity factors for solar PV uh, and CSP are under 25 percent. So I mentioned that um, solar capacity factor can um, vary geographically, very spatially. This gives you a sense for how um, photovoltaic solar resource potential varies throughout the United States. Um, so the, the warmer colors, the red and orange, uh, represent places where you would get more electricity um, per square meter per day. Um, using solar panels, and the green areas represent places where you would get less. And the main differences here are solar insulation, which is a combination of how much sunlight would reach uh, different parts of the earth uh, in clear sky conditions combined with the, the, the impacts of uh, cloud effects. There's also a tremendous amount of uh, temporal variability uh, in, in solar power production, and not just uh, from a day-night perspective. Um, what these different lines show are uh, monthly differences in solar insulation 
for different latitudes. Uh, so blue would be some, um, a latitude of zero, so you'd be right at the equator. And what you can see here is that you have pretty high solar insulation um, all throughout the year that's quite steady. Um, at the other extreme, uh, at a really, really high latitude, 90 degrees north, which that would represent this yellow line, you have uh, certain periods of the year during the summer that experience a tremendous amount of solar insulation. These are the places on Earth that don't get dark uh, during uh, during the summer, but then during the rest of the year, you're getting zero uh, insulation, so you're not getting any sunlight. Um, and then as you go between uh, zero degrees and 90 degrees, you're experiencing um, different levels of seasonality um, in solar insulation.